Hey, we're back. We removed the cap and diode here. When I started out a couple of minutes ago, all I did was swap the batteries because, you know, they say you can, so of course we're going to try and do it, right, with every charger that we have. Um, so what I had was those two batteries, and I just switched them around. Now, this one was sitting at 12.2 when I put it back uh, into being the charge battery. Of course, it was sitting at, I forget, 13.1 or something when it was the, was the run battery. Now it's a charge battery. So it's sitting now at 12.8. It's been running for about four or five minutes. This one, which we had been charging before, was sitting at about 13 volts, okay, uh, when it was done. And they each had a rest for about an hour. And um, it was sitting at 13. So it was 12.2 and 13 now we're at this one's pulled down being pulled down to 12.52 right now it's uh, using up oh what do we have there about uh, 1.7 amps and we got about these meters are really tricky but when I look straight on I'm looking at just under 1.2 so it's got to be 1.2 one eight or something like it. We'll call it one point two. We'll call it one point seven and one point two. Um, <clears throat> so that's that's drawn in input, and uh, I took the diode out of the circuit too, so that we can we can eliminate that as a variable right now. And uh, I'm running at fairly low frequency, but you can hear it's not that low. So I'm going to dump her down a little bit more. Okay, so that's all I got on the pot. We got 50 ohms of resistance there, 31 ohms of resistance on each trigger. Let's feel that. Got any heat coming off there yet? Nothing. Nothing on the uh, transistors. Now we're drawing, oh, 2.5. 3 5 amps that's being pulled down to 12.46 we're now inputting somewhere in the department of oh just a little bit better than 1.4 amps and our charging voltage And that's about as low as I can go right now with this setup. So that's just straight up SSG. Of course I can change these resistors quite easily. I didn't make it so that I can change the resistors on the base. But I think one next time I do I'm going to make it so that I can change everything. One thing I'll point out is that um, A, when you, if, you ever, if you ever do this, um, I have a feeling that Lexan you could ask 49er about this too because uh, I do believe he used something more like that. See, this is going to be this is going to be for my for my big one. Now it's got some thickness to it. Uh, I believe this might be actually a different kind of plastic instead of acrylic. It might actually be Lexan or something. I'm hoping, but I can fit a lot of 2N 3055s on that sucker, and. Uh, but this is just a little piece of acrylic and it was really quite difficult to drill without cracking I busted a few you got to go really slow and pilot stuff out and uh, get yourself a variable speed drill that goes really slow and be very patient because if you're like me you know and you drill a lot of holes well it would really suck to crack it right at the very end but here's something that I never thought of before that that actually works really good for one thing crazy glue works excellent like I'm surprised how really on there these things are. Only ones that I screwed were my power connections. Okay. Now I managed to get all of these um, terminal blocks for free because they're out of just various different things that use that. And I got all these these strips here for a buck a piece on clearance. So I got tons of those things. But look what I did here, which is kind of interesting. If you go to do this here, actually, I'll lift this up. I glued those terminal blocks sideways okay so that way 
you can run a wire in from the back right so here it is in the front right so it's the opposite as those ones right but that makes it really handy because your connections are down below so I actually have these two tied together and these two tied together so there's a wire that comes in the back then couples down to here a wire that comes in the back then couples down to there so no matter whether I use one or the other the, it's all good alright so you got the choice of paralleling two resistors or uh, whatnot and uh, I kinda I've been watching 49 49ers videos there really closely and uh, I seen so seen how he was you know playing around with some adding some some uh, some resistors and you know I thought well geez you know that might be something you want to actually do is just play around with it right and so I try, try to make it a little bit easy on myself eh? but I think next time when I do it I'm actually gonna add blocks that are glued on like this for my um, base resistance so that I can then and then I drop it into the base permanently but then be able to drop one of these in and the other reason why I did this well that's getting a little warmish definitely definitely a little warmish this is the whole reason why I really I really think that you know when it comes right down to it do this with MOSFETs like seriously you waste so much energy on your base circuit it's not even funny but anyways um yeah no with this with this uh with this system here if you had had the connectors for the base you know i think that would be the way to go cuz then you could fool around with that no matter what you were using so we're sitting at 12.89 That's not too bad though. I'm I'm a little tired for running numbers through my head doing the math, so I'll think about the math later. Like I say, you can only take this with so much regard anyways. And I'm not too sure. I'm not real good at listening at, at sounds to know what hurts I'm at. Let's feel this here. That's really nice and cool still. I actually think this aluminum is cooler. Would kind of make sense. The stuff does dissipate heat like you wouldn't believe. It's hard to get aluminum hot and stay hot. That's some fairly substantial heat on there though. Like I mean, not so hot that I can't hold it, but uh, I should almost do a I should I should measure the the drop on that. See just how much current's going through that. That's why you want to have them big fat suckers there, though. I learned uh, learned from 49er. You want to have them big fat suckers at the at the front of the line. That'll take all your all your juice out before it comes and hits the pot. And then I've all I've got there is two quarter watts in in parallel. But she's charging. And next time we'll charge a we'll charge a big battery and we'll see how long it takes to to charge a 100 amp hour battery with this setup. I should put a Pelche module on there. Charge a double A while I'm at it. All right, thanks for watching.